In high hazard industries such as the petrochemical and oil and gas sectors, process safety is concerned with preventing the release of hazardous chemicals which may lead to a catastrophic event involving many fatalities and enormous damage to the environment. An example of this was the Deepwater Horizon, the Macondo blowout in 2010. Personal safety is concerned with ensuring employees are kept safe whilst at work by the use of systems such as machine guarding, fire precautions and the use of personal protective equipment. Leaders in the process industry need to be both technically competent and actively involved in making decisions and understanding the consequences of their actions. The report from the Chemical Safety Board on the Texas City explosion and fire in 2005 concluded that BP Group leaders communicated the lessons to the business units but did not ensure that needed changes were made. Leaders in process safety management need to walk the talk as well as talk the talk. This means board level directors visibly promoting a positive safety culture and ensuring adequate resources are provided, together with a commitment to continuous improvement in process safety performance. Senior managers should also be able to assign process safety responsibilities and then hold those people to account in the event of an accident or an incident. Organisations continue to repeat mistakes and accidents occur because of something called corporate amnesia. Employees in the company learn when mistakes occur, but they move on or retire, so the knowledge is lost. Professor Trevor Kletz stated that organisations have no memory and accidents recur. Accidents are not due to lack of knowledge, but failure to use the knowledge we have. If organisations can learn to share the knowledge gained from accidents, the potential benefits are much greater for the process industry as a whole. Examples of promoting organisational learning would be sharing the results of incidents and accident investigations with the rest of the industry, as in the Step Change in Safety initiative, having documented management processes and benchmarking against other sites. Management of change in the process industries requires hazard identification and risk assessment to ensure that the full implications are understood before it is put into practice. This is to ensure that new hazards are not introduced and that existing risks are not increased. The Flixborough disaster in 1974 highlighted the need for effective management of change processes. Modifications to pipework were carried out without proper consideration of the design requirements and by people without the required competence. This is the reason why processes for all changes need to be authorised by competent persons, formally documented in an effective management of change system and where necessary training programmes must be implemented. It is good practice for employers to consult with their workforce, either directly or through worker representatives, because they can tap into the experience and insight their employees have about the operation of the process and any ideas they might have for the improvements that could, that could be made. The Baker Panel report into the accident at Texas City in 2005 indicated that BP had not established a positive trusting and open environment with effective lines of communication between management and the workforce. An example of limitations might be that often not all matters are agreed by true consultation. Some decisions, such as staffing, may need to be taken at high level and imposed, and this can result in frustration. Or it might be that consultation takes time and this may not always be possible in the case where rapid decision making is needed. Workers can be involved in safety committees, discussion groups and safety circles. Employees should also be able to raise safety concerns at departmental meetings 
and there are email and web-based forums that enable remote workers to highlight and voice safety concerns. Competence is generally defined as the ability to undertake responsibilities and perform activities to a recognised standard on a regular basis. It is a combination of practical and thinking skills, experience and knowledge. After the Bunsfield disaster in 2005, a process safety leadership group was established and one of the first key improvements required was that organisations should have in place competency management systems and training to ensure the right people have the right skills to manage and maintain major hazard controls on the site.